Today I want to introduce you to Bootstrap Calibration. So this will be fun. Let's assume we have a 95% bootstrap confidence interval generated using one of our favorite techniques, the percentile confidence interval. It gives us a Q low of something and a Q high of something, maybe 0.1 and 10. The problem is, as we discussed last time, there is some error in this bootstrap confidence interval. So what we said was a 95% confidence interval may not actually be 95% confident. It instead may only be 90% confident. So how do we know? Well, one thing that we can do is we can calibrate this confidence interval. So what do we mean? Remember the confidence interval was based upon the assumption that we wanted an area of equal to 0.05 from each tail. Uh, I guess 0.05 divided by two from each tail. But is this area necessarily correct? The area would be correct if we had in a sample size going to infinity, but we don't. So there's a little bit of error within the bootstrap confidence interval. So what can we do? Well, one of the easy things to do is go ahead and try lots of different areas. So for example, we could try one that is 0.05. Maybe that's a really good one. Maybe we could try one that's 0.04. Maybe we try one that's 0.03. Maybe we try one that's 0.025. So we try lots and lots of different areas. And depending on how good they are, and we're gonna define how good they are by the probability that the true population parameter is inside the confidence interval We'll choose the one of these, the area calculation down here, that is closest to a true 95% confidence interval. Okay, so what would we want to do? Well, we would want to take a population, figure out what its true population parameter was, then take a sample from this population, take a sample. In this case, the sample size can be in, and we're taking a single sample from it. And we go ahead and construct confidence intervals from this sample. But would this tell us what the true probability was? We only took one confidence interval. It's going to be either in or out. What we want is the average probability that theta hat is in a confidence interval drawn from a sample. So we take lots and lots of samples, and we take in big samples here to get lots and lots of confidence intervals and test each one according to the theta. That way we could get average values. So in this case, we might get like a 0.90 and a point. 9, 4, something like that, we could get average values of the area 0.05 constructing confidence intervals. And we'd learn which area was the best since we don't have necessarily an infinite sample size. Okay, we can't do this, right? Because we can't take lots and lots of samples from the original population. So what do we do instead? We, of course, use the plug-in principle. So instead of theta, we go ahead and use theta hat. We assume theta hat is going to be what we're looking for that's going to be inside the confidence intervals. And we take lots, instead of taking lots and lots of samples from the population itself, we take lots and lots of samples from the sample. So we make BS samples. And from each of these BS samples, we make a confidence interval. And with all of these confidence intervals, we can estimate what the true probability that theta hat will be inside a confidence interval Construct it with an area of 0.05. And this might give us, I don't know, 0 0.9, 0 0.92, 0 0.94, and then 0.95. And then based on this estimate, we know that the area, the correct area for the sample size that we had, in this case, the sample size was in, in this case, we used a big in samples from the sample. So for the sample size of in from this population, the correct area that we need to be taking is actually 0.025 instead of 0.5. Wow, that's pretty cool. And notice it's just an application of the plug-in principle. We simply duplicated the steps that we saw here down one level further. Okay, I want to go over one more thing before we conclude. And this one, or this final thing, excuse me, is that how do we construct confidence intervals from the bootstrap sample? Well, in fact, the classic way we construct confidence intervals is by making bootstrap samples. So in fact, from each bootstrap sample, we take capital N more bootstrap samples. So how many samples do we construct in total? Unfortunately, we construct N times N samples, or basically N squared, which can be really, really big. If this were a thousand, we'd now be taking one million samples, which would take a really, really long time. 
So, with a lot of power, in this case bootstrap calibration, comes great computational cost. So I'm going to be showing you another instance of bootstrap calibration next time to solve an equally important problem. Uh, it's going to be about as complicated as this, so I hope you are ready.